Hello and welcome to Drive and Double Feature Podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm Ryan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies, sometimes five movies a week for this special Friday the 13th week. But before we get into today's Friday the 13th movie, we have a Patreon. For $5 a month, you can actually watch some bonus episodes, some fun conversations. Sometimes we rank movies over there. And it's a good time over there. I highly recommend it if you want to help support the show. But today's Friday the 13th movie, we're talking about Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. This one came out in 1988, right after the last one. You know, this franchise just keeps rolling um this one stars um and i'm not kidding lar park lincoln so yes literally lincoln park stars into the, <laughs> in <this movie. laughs> i didn't even realize that yeah said that. um she plays tina so the big one for this one it's a super or sorry i should say telekinetic woman like carrie fighting against jason uh, i was really excited for this one I, I think we talked about this entry specifically before this well yeah because uh you and i we knew about all the other sequels but the one i knew about was like oh i know that one of them jason fights a telekinetic girl i can't wait to watch that one yeah i knew that one was that one was going to be like a blast i've heard a lot about it um and you know what I had fun with it. I think it's an enjoyable one. I actually think this one's really divisive. Some people really don't like this one, but I came out of it. I was like, you know what? I had a good time with it. It has issues. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it does have some issues, but the main event of it pays off big time. Yes. Yeah. Um, Now I will say the thing that annoys me about this movie is that the very beginning of the movie, okay, we have a narrator, and it pretty much retcons the end of the last movie. Uh, it's just like, oh, we all know. He even says, like, we all know how the last time, last time how this ended. Yeah, with Jason getting his, like, face destroyed by a propeller. And this, he just sinks to the bottom of the lake. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he does, well, he no, he's at the end of the lake at the last movie. He is, but he doesn't look like his face has been, like, destroyed by a boat propeller at least not what? not what i would think would it would look like so yeah so i mean they they kind of so i did watch the crystal lake memories uh, mm-hmm. documentary and they kind of explained what happens is that uh it's like this scene like at that scene at the end of six like that happens and then seven is supposed to be 10 years after six <laughs> yeah um do you do you know what year that would make this movie take place in 1995 2001 what <laughs> yeah i was looking i looked it up because i was like i gotta know yeah 2000 or 2001 is what they were saying because there is oh like a bunch God. of time skips does not look like the year 2000 i can tell oh. you that it looks like 88 through and through <laughs> Yeah, it does not look like any time has passed no. uh, since since 1980. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so they they that was kind of like intentional where they're like, okay, well, he's been in the water for 10 years, mm-hmm. and they were trying to show him decomposing, like, and it was like all like the hacks and bits of his face, like it was supposed to be representing all the injuries that he had throughout the movie like like at the end of uh friday the 13th part four where he gets stabbed in the eye and like that's why his eye looks all jacked Mm. up and everything but yeah i it it starts really awkwardly because it it kind of starts like as like a best of and then it turns into like a a friday the 13th part seven trailer where it's like a teaser trailer yeah, it's like nowadays how trailers have trailers before them, uh, little teasers. That's what this felt like. It was really interesting. Like, oh yeah, this is what you're getting in for. Just showed like all like the other kills from the movie, and then it's like, and it's like, and then he's back, and that's like part seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do love how cheesy that is, though. Like, it, it's like a fun intro. Um, but we do get intro- introduced into, into our character, our main character, Tina, who has um, whose powers, just uh, psychic powers can pick people up. And she kills her dad in Crystal Lake, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess they were, 
vacation, which they said that was the same home that Tommy Jarvis's family lived in. Okay. Like that was supposed gotcha. to be the same home. I don't remember and the boat deck. Uh, was there a boat? That, there might, I don't know. But, don't uh, know. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I guess like her dad was like an abusive drunk or whatever. And then yeah. she like jumps onto a boat and her telekinetic powers <laughs> brings the whole boat dock on top of her dad and he falls in the water. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, that comes back later. Don't forget oh. about it like I did. <laughs> Because uh, that character came back and I was like, who? Who, who is that? <laughs> oh, wow. That ending must have been shocking for yeah, you. It, yeah, it was like, yeah. what? What is going on? And then she says, I think she says daddy. And I'm like, oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, but, yeah. But no, this movie is all from the point of view of Tina. Um, Tina goes back to Crystal Lake. And actually, the, the enemy in this is like the doctor. So she has like a doctor who's. I don't know what quite his motivations are, but she he's trying to like control her to the point where she like does horrible things with her powers. Um, I was gonna say, do you know who that doctor is? I don't. Have you ever seen the movie Weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> is he Bernie? That's Bernie. <laughs> That's funny. I like <laughs> wow. I, I don't think I've ever seen him not dead. I don't know what else I've seen him in. Yeah, well, he dies in this one, too. Yes, he does. He does. Spoilers um, for the audience in the Jason movie, People Die. Uh, I'm shocked. Yeah. Okay, so I do think if there's one thing, I think that is a negative on this movie. I actually think some kills are really fun, but you can tell that this movie was cut to ribbons. In my opinion, there's kills that like you only see a half second of like it barely happens and then it cuts away because i know this movie had a lot of problems with it it got an x rating and they had to cut it a lot and you you can tell so that was a big talking point and Mm -hmm. this uh and this movie um like the the director um he was just saying like he's like yeah the uh mpaa pretty much just destroyed my movie and he because um, the director, uh, John Carl uh, Beckler, he actually has like experience with horror movies. Like he comes from like the Charles Band school, or like he he worked on Trancers. He worked on. Oh, I love uh, this movie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the uh, Ghoulies and Terrorvision Reanimator. So mm-hmm. this guy has like tons of experience doing horror movies, and this is like one of his like opportunities where he got to direct a movie because he was mainly like a uh, special effects guy and uh, this is like one of his first like big budget horror movies that he got to direct and um so he actually had like so in like the behind the scenes like there were like the kills in this movie are super graphic like yeah um there's scenes where like they go on really long that shows like every rip and tear in the body um but they had to submit this movie nine times to the MPAA to get just to get an R rating. Yeah. And uh, he just he was so sad. I like, just like it was such like like a maddening experience where he was just saying like, like, you know, I would spend like all this money and time and effort to shoot all these kills. And they're like, no, not good. You know, like too violent mm-hmm. or whatever. And it was just you know they people were talking about like you know we spent all this time and like you know like these scenes would be taking forever to shoot and Mm -hmm. pretty much you only see like a second of it in the movie yeah exactly it's like really sad i I do think it helps some of the kills to hide it like uh, i think one of the best kills one of the most recognizable kills is somebody does get killed while in the sleeping bag and jason slams them into the tree um i I think that's like one of the best kills and you don't really see a lot that's more of like okay i can use my imagination that somebody's dead because they hit a tree yeah and they that's what one thing they did say it's like the only time they they thought it actually came out better in the edited version because in Mm -hmm. the they show a little bit of the extended version and it's uh like it's just him like continually (laughs) slamming her into like a tree while she's in the sleeping bag but this one it's just like 
there's like one big hit and then she's dead yeah that's funny because the way i because i know i knew this scene and the way i remembered it was somebody getting slammed over and over again into the tree like but um i guess watching this movie the first time it was a little brutal whenever it's just like like one hit from jason just kills you instantly well not to be a spoiler but there either is they do recreate this kill in a later jason movie so yeah there we go yeah um but there's a lot of things that this that didn't happen for this movie because originally this movie i don't know if you know but the original this movie was supposed to be a freddy versus jason movie really i did not know that like they really wanted that to happen because at this point um freddy had just had his third movie come out oh wow so freddy was like at his peak yeah so this was like they're like let's put these two guys in a movie but unfortunately it just the deal kind of just fell through didn't end up happening and it was uh it was really it was really tough for it to like uh to get through but they still were like oh we still want an adversary for jason we want jason to really have to be up against somebody tough so that's how the tina or the basically they're like oh just do Mm -hmm. uh, jason versus carrie yeah and and i I like that idea because i mean uh Jason's pretty much supernatural now. He's like a supernatural force, and it's like supernatural versus another supernatural person. It's like the it's like yeah. a real competition. And Jason is this time played by the guy that's most synonymous, which I didn't realize that it took him this long to be. Same in the movie. here. He's not even in like some of the prime ones that I think people really remember, which is interesting. Right, and that's uh, Kane Hodder, mm-hmm. and he is the guy most known for playing Jason and yes, uh, yeah. he uh, I think he does really good because they were saying like because he was like this guy was actually like a qualified stunt man like even before like even like part six like he really wasn't like a qualified stunt man or anything or really wasn't experienced like Kane Hodder has like tons of experience doing stunts and he was said he was watching like a lot of the old ones and he was saying like Jason was practically like a zombie and mm-hmm. just like moving really slow, like no human interactions. He gave him a lot more like human characteristics, like like his movements, like whenever you'd hear a sound, like his whole like his head would turn and like his whole body would turn too. Yeah, yeah. He definitely has like a lot of emotion here. Like it definitely like head turns and stuff. He feels like a more emotive Jason, but that makes him even scarier. I think this is actually Jason and his scariest even because like maybe maybe not for the first two but he's back to being kind of scary um because there's something about his there's like a scene where they're getting away in in the car and um they're in the dark and then all of a sudden the lights shine and it has jason stabbing someone and it just goes by really fast and I, i actually thought that was kind of a scary scene like the idea of like oh i'm just driving down the road and boom someone's getting murdered on the side of the street so i think that's interesting yeah, well, then it's revealed too that that was actually like a premonition that yeah uh, that Tina was having because it was re- it's been revealed that she can not only have telekinesis but she can see the future too. Yes, yeah, she's just an all powerful woman. Uh, yeah. So we talked about the cast in a lot of these movies. Um, this is not a crazy good cast. Tina, Tina's good. I like Tina, um, but. Everyone else is definitely just a cannon fodder. I, I do love that they're throwing the party next door and they're waiting for this guy, Michael, the whole time. The whole time, like, oh, Michael's going to be here soon. They're, they're <laughs> Michael waiting, day, dies. <laughs> okay, they're waiting days for this guy. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 there's a scene where um, two of the characters are having sex and then they're like done and like, oh, uh, Michael must be here. Let's get, let's get some balloons. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? it's like, wait. They're, that they even said that like in the talking like that, that scene in particular they're like like the guy playing the guy he's like all of a sudden we were having sex and then i just didn't want to have sex anymore <laughs> like i don't i don't like i don't get it like yeah it's so silly uh th- this movie has nudity of course it actually was a little bit more than the last one if i remember right it, it's a, a, it's little a lot it, it's not not as much but it, yeah it definitely is more than this it's not as bad as five but, no god five, but five more is, than six five is on another level this one at least knows what it wants it knows it's a slasher and people die and then it, it, it's it's cool um but but which you know we talk about like the supernatural element in here but 
this movie is actually like less tongue in cheek than, than six. It is, <laughs> yeah. Th- this one kind of plays it seriously. Six is like a whole is like a joke, and then this one's like. I mean, it knows what it is, but it it's, like, never really, like, for comic value. You know, it's not like, oh, wow, this is just so stupid, isn't it? I, I kind of like that about that, though. Because, like, if I made this movie, I don't know if I could take it seriously, <laughs> this whole idea. Because, like, the ending sequence gets wild. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Where she starts using her actual powers on Jason and he's covered with like little electric lines on him that are animated. It gets so silly. Um, I wanted to go back to the, I, before we get into like the finale, I did want to circle back to the human characters. Yeah. Like the oh, teams yeah. is uh, the, uh, I, there was some that I, I, I the, at least they had some type of personality to them. Like there are two characters that are just, like the two the couple having sex or whatever like they have like no personality like i couldn't think of anything and then um then there's like like the stoner characters there that's right and it's and then but like he's like the stud character but he's like a total goon i did not understand that that is not how these movies work the the stoner is not also like the stud because multiple women are going after him like the one girl is like well i mean the one nerdy girl in the group is like oh you know i re- i really like him and but yeah and it's like this guy is like a total like sleaze yeah sleaze ball too but she's against smoking weed which i find so silly because that one girl's like oh i'm gonna be with him and then and she's like, you're going to have to smoke weed. And she's like, I feel like having fun. And she's so against that. Like, no, don't, well, don't smoke the weed. <laughs> like you want her, you like, you want this girl to, you want to like this girl, but she yeah. is like a total buzzkill too. Cause yes, it's yeah. like, cause they want to go out and have, like, they're at a party, they're drinking, they're smoking mm-hmm. weed. And she's like, uh, Robin, you promised not to smoke <laughs> weed. And she's like, uh, we're at a party. I'm going to have fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> is, is she wrong? What was Robin wrong? I don't know, but that's, that was just like, I, I was like, I don't really, yeah. I, I didn't really care about the plight of the, the nerdy girl character. Cause then she has, she does the, uh, the big makeover like in Greece where she gets yeah. all dolled up and she still doesn't get the guy. No. Because of the, at this point, the stoner character and her friend have already had sex. Yeah, exactly. That's already, that's a done deal. Uh, Robin there, God, she is a mean character. To, because Tina shows up. And you mean she, uh, oh, Melissa? Oh, sorry. Melissa. Melissa is a mean character. She just, um, she goes off on Tina the whole time. It's like, oh, you need to be in a mental asylum. Oh, you need to go to the loony bin. Where'd you come from? The crazy house? The whole yeah, thing. like just uh, like I don't know how anybody likes this character. And then she and there's like the guy, there's like the one guy there that's like obsessed with sci-fi, like writing a sci-fi what, novel. What a weird character. I kind of <laughs> like the idea because it's so out there. Where the whole time he's like quoting like weird, like, oh, I'm Rad Radnarath from the planet Vlatu or some crazy crap. Um, yeah, it it's it's so uh, he like not saying anything like discerning, he's just making up like these random sci-fi terms and yeah. Uh but like in order to get like because melissa really wants to go after nick who's like mm-hmm. the other stud character but he's like like kind of like the night like the boy next door type of like nice guy type of thing yeah. and um in order to make him jealous even though this guy clearly doesn't have any affection yeah, for no. melissa at all like has zero interest towards her and she's like tries to hook up with the sci-fi guy <laughs> and <laughs> like to make him jealous and then she turns down the sci-fi guy being like uh i was just trying to make nick jealous and he's like oh you think you like you think i'm bothered by that i've been turned down by some of the biggest sci-fi yeah. publishers in the world yeah that's what he's like oh rejection i know rejection <laughs> <laughs> so over the top um but yeah she's like I mean, I don't use the word lightly but yeah she's like the bitch character and that's the, i mean that's what she's there for like um, has no no redeeming qualities just like a total like mean girl yeah um but you know what they all die so it's 
it's okay, right? That's all fine in the end. Oh, I don't know where to put this in, so I'm going to say it now. You know who was originally, uh, like, or who was pinned to direct this movie? Fellini. Go ahead. What? (laughs) Yeah, Fellini was tied to this movie for a little bit. (laughs) Really? Yeah, for real. I'm not not kidding. Like, they didn't mention that at all in the documentary. Yeah, no, I was reading around, and I, yeah, Fellini. Fellini's Friday the 13th, part seven. Uh, There would have been a lot more fart jokes, but and nudity uh, and nudity um but then it would have been art so <laughs> well yeah then then it could be a french movie <laughs> yeah. or uh, sorry italian italian yeah yeah uh it's so bizarre like i that, that isn't even like in the same realm of who i thought you were gonna say no it doesn't even make sense right that's why i thought it was so funny i had to bring it up like i was i would I was gonna joke and say like, oh, like Werner Herzog or something. Like, close. I'm like, that would have been close. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have been like, oh, not, not bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, <laughs> maybe in another reality we would have gotten that. I want to go to that timeline. I think that would have been <laughs> weird if art directors were just hired to make slasher movies. Yeah. Now they're hired to make Marvel movies. but uh no i so now we can kind of i think we can we've kind of established that but Mm -hmm. uh yeah the the finale is great like you said uh he gets tied up by the electrical cords and like he's like in this big puddle of water Mm -hmm. and like he gets electrocuted Mm -hmm. it looks great um it's almost like uh, it, the way it's like put together, it just looks really cool. Actually, this whole final sequence is really cool where they fight each other. I, I think it builds up to something like really fun. I was hoping, I was really hoping there would have been more of like the telekinetic type stuff. Yeah. No, I and, agree. I, I mean, wish it was there like the whole movie. Yeah. Like I wanted it to be like the movie, like Zapped or whatever. Where she's yeah. Just like she's floating stuff all the time, except, you know, uh, well, I did say like, she can only get it to come out when her emotions are like extreme and yeah. so like there's times where she like gets like a matchbook and she sets it on fire because like the therapist is kind of like poking and prodding her and then uh, melissa is like trying to trigger her and like mm-hmm. she snaps melissa's pearl necklace which is a good scene yeah that's a good where it kind of just like floats off and then it pops out but every time tina does anything like that she makes herself so suspicious because she runs out like instantly yeah. anytime something small happens she's like out the door running yeah it makes her look like like oh you i guess she did that but. yeah <laughs> and that's the other thing too like they do they so the, the therapist obviously knows she has power her mother knows she has powers mm-hmm. and they're just letting this telekinetic girl run free like does the doctor only is he the only one that knows about the powers or I- I don't know what's going on here with that whole relationship. Well, because they because they imply she was in a mental institution. Yes, and, yeah. And uh, I guess that's where the doctor met her, maybe, or I don't know. And like mm-hmm. the only thing I can think, but who would allow? Like, what mother would be like? Oh, yeah, let, this is totally a normal arrangement. Let me let my underage daughter and a therapist like. <laughs> and my and like how is that not a conflict of interest and <laughs> right yeah and, and it's just it's just weird and she doesn't know anything about like what's going on she has to find out later by hearing one second of like a clip on like a recording and she's like yeah what are you doing to her you know kind of deal i know like mother is totally oblivious to her daughter being exploited by this <laughs> man exactly um but he, he that character dies and he's actually like a you know he's a he's a bad guy so jason's actually a good guy for once i know could have mm-hmm. the movie could have ended right there and he would have been a hero <laughs> I, who knows who knows maybe in the pg cut that they edit, they put together yeah practically getting back into the finale was uh it, it was just such a treat because like she's mm-hmm. like hurling <laughs> objects i got jason and it's so comedic because it's a it's a great moment because it's uh she's like just destroying jason and jason's like trying to like get like kill her but 
Mm-hmm. Like she's throwing her, the house plant, the TV at him, and, <laughs> and dousing like the, him with like gasoline at one point. <laughs> yeah, and uh, throws him like projectile throws him, and he like goes through the stairs <laughs> yeah. into the basement. Uh, that 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 that's a great moment. Yeah, uh, and the you know she gets gasoline everywhere, and the house explodes. That explosion caught me way off guard. That explosion is nuts it's so huge i can't believe they got that big of an explosion in this movie yeah that, that was not intentional that oh really it, it exploded way too much than they thought they would and- okay it <laughs> felt like it watching that clip i was like oh i've never seen anything like this in a movie of this budget and uh the like they said like it busted out lenses and like wow the girl that played uh uh I think the young version of Tina, I think she said she was there on set that day. And she said, like, like everyone was like, uh, this is like, like everyone's like, should we be feeling like this much heat from the explosion? <laughs> like, and it just like I said, like a lot of plastic objects around there were like melted. And it was wow. just like, because uh, it was just it was it was a huge explosion. Like they didn't mean to explode yeah. the house that much. That's funny. Um, I love that. But uh, but one moment before that that happens is uh, mm-hmm. she actually gets uh, snaps Jason's mask right in half. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah. And uh, so one thing of the behind the scenes was is uh, so there was an associate producer who I guess was on Frank Pancuso's team, like one of the main producers of the Friday the Thirteenth, like that she came on to assist, and apparently like her and the director like butted heads like all the time oh wow and okay and like didn't like everyone said like there was just like a ton of tension so the scene that happened like she snaps the mask in half and jason's like decomposing face is uh on full display and like the producer said like that looks stupid like there, you shouldn't even like she like vetoed it from the movie Oh, like wow. did not want like full on did not want it to be in there and uh so he was like the director's like well i was gonna go to frank mancuso and just go over her head but i just went ahead and shot it anyway so <laughs> she couldn't <laughs> she couldn't say no and Damn. so he was like which i'm glad he did because that act i actually that was like a cool moment and yeah, i liked I, it. I, and i and I thought the prosthetics looked pretty good. I agree. I think they look good for the time. I like I like Jason's look. I think it's always fun getting to see what he looks like. And here he looks he looks really gross, like very gross. I, I like getting to see that. It's the longest time you see him too without a mask on. Yeah, yeah, because you actually get to see him like emote, like you get to see his like reaction to it. Yeah, like he's like doing like he's like his face is scrunching up, like his eyes and mouth is like open, like really big, <laughs> like like he's trying to yell but he can't. But yeah. Um, and then the other moment, so you kind of alluded to it. So like they kind of have like the they uh, they they fight on the docks, and so okay, here's a stupid moment. But even before the moment you're talking about, was, <laughs> okay. Uh, so like the house explodes. Her and Nick are like out on the dock, and they're thinking like, oh, it's it's over. And then like Jason sneaks up on them like on a dock, and like he gets out of like the a fiery basement i'm like mm-hmm. it's like okay like how could this huge monster of a man just like sneak up it's not like they're like in the forest and it's dark like they're out in the middle of a dot like there's only no. one direction you can come from on a dot exactly and if you <laughs> looked at like earlier in the movie because the father dies like in that area the dock was so unstable it like moves you can you can hear crap on a dock from a mile away like it, those things are not quiet so <laughs> especially this like giant of a man just like yeah probably like hurling himself down the down the dock so yeah. <laughs> i couldn't but, imagine that jason's thinking okay i'm gonna sneak he's on his tiptoes just you know crawling up to him yeah but no. uh the moment you were talking about you can go ahead and explain that oh yeah yeah so you know she's like fighting back against him and then all of a sudden she summons her dad who's at the bottom of the lake to grab jason and drag him down into the lake with him it's so I don't even know how to explain it silly and like i said earlier i didn't know it was his dad at first i was like who is this character who is this dead person coming where is he coming from um i don't know it's stupid 
Yeah, I think she did say daddy. She did, she, she did, yeah. When she yeah. said that, I was like, oh, gotcha. So this was the other talking point, was this scene. was okay. um, So, like, they actually... Um, I guess this woman just hated prosthetics because... Weird she they actually had like that guy like in heavy prosthetics like made him look like real zombie like like he's Mm -hmm. like decomposing and they actually shot like this really long fight sequence between jason and his dad and uh she vetoed it and just said no that's stupid and that's why then why make a friday the 13th movie if you think all this crap is stupid (laughs) i know like why even make uh, it did well because i guess you know she really had like a lot of experience and like i said this was her first horror movie and i Mm -hmm. guess she found out pretty quickly she wasn't a fan but i mean not only that uh, they actually put some really heavy prosthetics on Mm -hmm. um her dad the guy playing her dad and uh the other thing she said again she said the prosthetics look stupid mm-hmm. and so that's why like when the dad bursts out of the water even though he's been in the water for 10 years uh he just has like a slightly dirty yeah. face he looks like just a normal guy like he looks like a regular average joe <laughs> coming to take jason down yeah he's it's... just got a little, a little bit of dirt on his face you know no big deal yeah exactly because that's not stupid at all well well, let me ask you though. Let's just say, like, the whole scene was done like that. Well, h- how do you feel about that scene, that twist? The twist? Oh God, I guess it's kind of stupid because <laughs> I, I didn't like it. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, I, you know, I get it. You know, she did bring Jason back to life, but I'm like, she brought her like she, she can just bring anybody back to life yeah she's like an all-powerful being and like i'm gonna guess she's never gonna return in these movies because she would be she seems way too powerful uh well she doesn't yeah okay makes sense um but yeah no it's just it's weird like oh i'm gonna get my dad to get you now and obviously her dad is not jason Voorhees, not even close no no Oh, yeah. well, oh, one thing I was going to mention, um, which uh, I was going to do, like, and I guess in a cleanup process, but like at the supposedly at the end of six, mm-hmm. they originally were going to have the movie end up uh, showing Jason's dad. Like that was like the twist. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, like, well, check out Jason's dad. Well, yeah. So like, you know, like the caretaker, he's like, oh, I got to clean up this grave to make sure nobody sees. And mm-hmm. Apparently, it was the uh, Jason's dad that was paying the grave digger, the caretaker or groundsman to take care of Jason's grave. That's funny. Does does his mom even talk about his dad in the first movie at all? Not that I remember. No, I don't think so. But that no. was supposed to be like the big twist. And then supposedly in the uh, novelization of Six, it does <laughs> add that ending in there. Oh, it does? Okay, I <laughs> now I got to read it. A Friday the 13th book sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> uh, it sounds like it could be a lot more graphic than the movie. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, who cares about reading violence? You can, yeah. as long as I don't see it, I'm fine. Yeah, I've read and I've read some absolutely horrible stuff, but in, in a movie, uh uh-uh, uh, that's not okay. <laughs> Maybe you gotta neuter a movie. You gotta make sure that part seven, you can't even see any act of violence. Um, but uh, this movie, uh, this movie ends on like a kind of a super positive note. Like uh, out of all the Friday the Thirteenth, yeah, the the two end up in the ambulance together, right? Like the uh, the Tina and then the main dude. And yeah. Just, oh, yep. Yeah, we move well, on. Well, because like uh, it's like at the end of the two, like uh, I think she said, like, "Where's Paul? Where's Paul?" And like, <laughs> yeah. I, and they they do that for a minute. And this one, there she goes, "Where's Nick? Where's Nick?" And he's and they're like, "He's fine." And yeah, he's like, here. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> and then and then they just get in the ambulance, drive away. Not even a teaser that Jason is still out there. Or no, whatever. It's just like uh, it seemed. It felt like they were like done with it. Like and uh, this once again, they were like, "Well, maybe this will be the final piece. Like we'll finish it here." You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it, obviously, they did it. No, but it's it is kind of sad that the uh, six and seven, which in my opinion, you know, were 
marginally better than five. They grossed mm-hmm. less than five. Both of them did. Yeah, I know that that really sucks. I, I guess at the time it was probably, especially for Friday the Thirteenth. If you're going to the newspapers to get your critical reviews, what movies I should see, then Friday the Thirteenth was never the movie you were going to go see. Other and the internet wasn't there to tell you like, oh, this one's actually good. You know, like it. I'm sure people are getting fatigued of the series at this point. Well, the 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 theory that a lot of because pretty much like the cast and crew for six and seven, they're like, no, oh, these are these are good movies, and yeah. I agree, both of them are good. And, I agree, uh, but uh, they said that like five was so bad and disastrous mm-hmm. that it pretty much turned like a lot of people off to the series. Yeah, it's kind of one of those. I think, I think they said that like six and seven ended up being like a home video hit. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah, because I could see that. Five was pretty awful. Five was like a pretty bad movie. I can understand. I'm sure somebody saw that and was just like, this is where the series is going. I'm not going to pay big money for that. But I will rent it from the store. <laughs> I will yeah. give it a rental. Well, um, I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, like Back then, it's like, it's like, hey, I got I to gotta make sure I use my time wisely at the theater here. Yes, yeah, um, but Blockbuster, you know, they got they got those deals. You gotta get you gotta get it. Except for Ryan's mom, uh, I won't bring that up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no, I I don't remember which one that 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 video store employee was talking about, but yeah, it definitely <laughs> set me back watching those movies like an extra five years or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you are not alone in 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 that world of getting told no. I'm not seeing Friday. You're not seeing Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, um, but I had a uh, I had the NES game to bide my time. Yes, yeah, the wonderful NES game. I've never played. Yes, it, so I don't know. Fantastic. Well, um, we'll have to do a let's play, maybe. <laughs> you know what? That would be that would be a fun Patreon episode. Do like bad video or do the video games based off of the movies we've talked about the remo williams fun. game yeah uh yeah. the uh the Vive video game. <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah it's hard to get that one it's a russian exclusive but we'll get it sent well, out um, we'll get there but uh i think that's it i think we both enjoyed it yeah oh yeah this part seven was a you know i was excited for this one and i wasn't let down like you know it has its negatives but i think overall it's what i want out of one of these movies just fun it was a fun good time yeah we'll uh we'll share our final rankings at the end of this week i think for all 10 movies but but uh yeah it's definitely a worthy entry and definitely better than some of the other ones in here (laughs) yes um but yeah i guess that wraps it up for this one I, Wait, what I, are we going to talk about tomorrow i, have no I, idea. I don't know what is it do you know do you want to just recommend something real fast uh yeah let's just do grand theft auto that other ron howard movie okay yeah sounds good yeah so for this <laughs> special friday the 13th week grand theft auto <laughs> also has a video game adaptation grand theft auto Oh, yeah, but I heard Ron Howard didn't return. They tried their hardest. Sad. Uh But no, Nathan, we will talk about Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan. He's going to New York. (laughs) Oh, hey. I'm walking here, Jason. (laughs) I I, I, I haven't seen it. I hope it's <laughs> something like that. I hope so. I hope Jason speaks for the first time in a New York accent. That'd be great. Yeah. Hey, I'm stabbing you over here. <laughs> All right. Well, if you enjoyed this episode or if you want to send us an email, send us an email over at drive and double feature podcast at gmail.com. Also, you can tweet at us at DIDF pod. Maybe if it still exists. I don't know. Uh, but. Until next time. Until next time. <laughs> I don't know what that Just was. to let you know, Ryan did a stabbing motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you could hear it. Yes, of until course. Ne- until next time. <laughs> <laughs>